This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be mostly about examples of indefinite binary quadratic forms, ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared. Um, so the last couple of lectures, we were looking at examples where the discriminant d, which is b squared minus 4ac, was less than zero, in which case the form is either positive definite or negative definite. Um, this time we're going to be looking at the case when the discriminant d is at least zero, which are either indefinite or degenerate. Um, and we start by recalling that we can make the form reduced. In other words, we make a as small as possible and then make b as small as possible given a um, optoequivalence. And we remember that usually for a reduced form we can have b as absolute value less than or equal to a, which is absolute value less than or equal to that of c. Um, this is provided a is not zero. Um, so for um, positive definite forms in the previous lectures, this condition couldn't turn up, but it's going to turn up this lecture. So, so we just remind you, if, if a is not zero, then if we've got a form ax squared plus bxy plus something, then we can change x to x plus ny for a suitable y. And this will change b by um, 2na. So by doing this, we can make b between minus a and a as long as a is non-zero. If, if a is zero, then, then doing this doesn't change the value of, of b. Um, so um, we remember every form is equivalent to a reduced form satisfying this condition as long as a is non-zero. Um, and um, so in the case of positive definite forms, we showed there were only a finite number of reduced forms. Um, well, we're going to show the same thing for this. Um, so what we do is we notice that um, um, b squared um, is less than or equal to ac, because b is less than a and c. That means um, for ac, certainly is absolute value at least that of b squared. And since b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero, this implies that ac must actually be negative or less than or equal to zero. Um, so uh, um, this means that b squared um, plus 4ac is, great, is equal to d. So in particular, 4 a squared must be less than or equal to d in absolute value. So, so you remember for positive definite forms, we had the, 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 the formula 3a squared is less than or equal to the absolute value of d. Um, this, for indefinite forms, we get this slightly stronger condition that 4a squared is less than or equal to d. In any case, this implies there are a finite number of possibilities um, for a, and this means there are a finite number for b, assuming a is non-zero, as I mentioned before, which means there are only a finite number um, of reduced forms of, of given discriminant. So most of the time we have a finiteness theorem for forms, um, although this, this will actually break down if d is equal to zero, for example, because then a can be zero and other such weird things. Um, so... Uh, um, now we want to look at the forms, and you remember the discriminant d must be congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4. So for d at least 0, d can be 0, 1, 4, 5, 8, 9, and so on. We're going to look at a few of these cases. First of all, d equals 0 is, is, is kind of degenerate. So if d is 0, this means that um, if, if, we, if we look at the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, this means um, both roots are rational. And if we're looking at ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, this means it factors as something times x plus something times y all squared times some rational constant. So it's essentially... So, so, so the form essentially becomes just the square of something linear in x and y. For instance, if we take 5 times 3x plus 4y all squared, this will have discriminant equal to 0. Um, so there are an infinite number of forms of 
um, discriminant zero because I mean you can just vary this constant here for example but somehow they're, they're just not very interesting um, you're, you're just asking is some constant times a square equal to some number n so so everything is easy to do um, um, next we look at the case d equals one which isn't quite as degenerate as d equals zero but is still um, um, not terribly interesting so we had 4a squared um, is going to be less than or equal to d, which is equal to 1. So um, obviously a must actually be 0. So since b squared minus 4ac is now equal to 1, this, this gives us b is equal to um, plus or minus 1. Um, so our form is going to be something like, well, plus or minus xy plus cy squared. And now we notice we can just... Um, um, change x to x minus c and possibly changing x to minus x if necessary we can say this is this is going to be equivalent to the form x y and again this is not terribly exciting i mean solving the equation x y equals n is kind of rather easy to do we can just take x equals one y equals n and more generally the solutions will depend on factorization of n so uh, there's just nothing terribly interesting to say about this case um, um, incidentally, you've got to be a little bit careful here because this is one of the cases where a is equal to zero, so we don't find that b has absolute value less than that of a. Um, so um, now let's look at the next case, which is d equals four. Um, and again, this is actually not much better than the case d equals one. So we find um, 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 4a squared is less than or equal to d, which is equal to 4, so a must be 0 or plus or minus 1. Um, and um, if we classify, then we get forms like, um, well, if a is 0, then b is equal to plus or minus 2, so we get plus or minus 2xy plus c times y squared. Um, we, we also get a can be plus 1, in which case we get the form x squared minus y squared or of course we could get minus x squared plus y squared but um, and all of these forms kind of factorize so this is equal to plus or minus um, y times 2x plus cy and um, this is equal to x minus y times x plus y so so like the case d equals one these, these have a strong tendency to factorize as a product of two linear forms in fact, this sort of thing happens whenever d is equal to a square, because then we find the roots of x squared, ax squared plus bx plus cy are both rational. Because, you know, they're, they're minus b plus or minus the square root of d over 2a. And if d is a square, these are rational numbers. And this means that the form ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared is going to split as something times something times x plus something times y um, times something else times x plus something else times y. So it will split us two linear factors with rational or integral coefficients, as, as we can see up in, in these cases here. And again, solving this equation equals n is not terribly interesting. I mean, you just take the prime fact, you just factorize n into two factors and try and equate them with these two and so on. So, so there's not anything all that interesting you can say when the discriminant is a square. So um, now we move on to the um, some more interesting cases. So the um, two cases when d is not a square are going to be d equals 5 and d equals 8. So, so we're going to look at these cases in a bit more detail. So let's try d equals 5. And let's find the reduced forms ax squared plus b bxy plus cy squared with d equals b squared minus 4ac is equal to 5. So we notice that b must be odd and it's reduced so b is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to c in absolute value. Um, and we have this equality 4a squared is um, less than or equal to d which is equal to 5 so this obviously gives a is equal to 0 or plus or minus 1 um, and um, if a is equal to 0 
this doesn't work very well because then we would have b squared is equal to 5 so a is equal to plus or minus 1 and if we take a equals plus 1 um, then we know b has absolute value at most that of a and must be plus or minus 1 so we get forms like x squared plus xy um, minus y squared and x squared minus xy minus y squared and then with with if a is minus 1 we get minus x squared plus xy plus y squared and we also get minus x squared um, minus xy plus y squared and what you notice is that all these forms are actually equivalent um, you, you, you can just sort of swap x and y or change x to minus x or something so that means um, any form of discriminant d equals 5 is equivalent to um, this unique form x squared plus xy minus y squared. And now we can work out which primes are represented by this. Um, so we recall that um, n is represented by some form of discriminant d equals uh, discriminant d that, that that's primitively represented um, if and only if d is a square mod 4n so now let's take n to be a prime as usual just to make things a bit simpler and we find this the condition is that 5 is a square mod 4p well it's a, a square mod 4 so so the, the the only condition we have is that 5 is a square mod p and by quadratic reciprocity this is equivalent to p um, equals 5 or p is congruent to 1 or 4 mod 5 as as we saw in previous lectures so um these are the forms which can be written as x squared plus xy minus y squared and we can have a look at a few examples of this for instance 11 is of the form 1 mod 5 and we can write 11 as 3 squared plus 3 times 1 um, minus 1 squared and 19 is another so 19 is 4 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 1 squared and so on so we know exactly which primes can be written as x squared plus xy minus y squared um, and let's do the case n equals d equals 8 so um, here again we want to find the reduced forms so so our form is ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared and we have b squared minus 4ac is equal to 8 so we notice immediately that b must be even this time and we have the equality 4a squared is less than or equal to d and this um, since d is equal to 8 this gives us a is equal to 0 well we can't have 0 for the same reason as before or um, plus or minus 1 so so a can only be 0 if if b squared is equal to d so this would be the degenerate case when d is a square which we dismissed as being rather uninteresting so a is um, plus or minus 1 and b is even and has absolute value less than or equal to a so b must be equal to 0 and so um, we get x squared minus 2y squared um, or we get um, minus x squared plus 2y squared um, well these forms are in fact equivalent and if you think about it a moment you'll see it's not at all obvious that they're equivalent if you swap x and y they don't turn into each other and if you change the sign of x or y they don't turn into each other either so the equivalence between these two reduced forms is actually a little bit subtle um, what you notice is that um, um, x squared minus 2y squared is in fact equal to um, minus x plus 2y all squared plus 2y um, minus x squared so that's something minus something squared plus two times something squared is the same as something squared minus two times something squared um so th 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 this is um um not really obvious it's, it's a sort of slightly subtle fact that these two apparently distinct reduced forms turn out to be equivalent um so um any form of discriminant d equals minus eight 
sorry, e d plus 8 is equivalent to this. Um, and as before, we can work out which numbers are represented by form of prim which numbers are primitively represented. So th this means that n is primitively represented by x squared minus 2y squared if and only if um, 8 is a square mod 4n. And as usual, we just take n to be a prime. Um, so we want 8 to be a square mod p. So 8p is equal to plus 1. This is assuming p is odd. Um, the, the, the case p equals 2. Obviously, 8 is also a square modulo 4p. So, so we want 8p is plus 1. And we remember that this is equivalent to p is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 8. So um, p equals x squared minus 2y squared is solvable for a prime p if and only if p is equal to 2 or p is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 8. And as usual, we can um, just look at a few examples of it. For instance, we see that 7 is equal to 3 squared minus 2 times 1 squared. Well, we also notice this is also equivalent to um, minus x squared plus 2y squared. So we should be able to write 7 as 2 times something squared um, minus something. And we can see we, we can write 7 as 2 times 2 squared minus 1 squared. So that works. And we can do a few more cases like this. So 17 is, is 1 mod 8. So we can write this as, well, let me see, it's 2 times 3 squared minus 1. So that's 2 times a square minus a square, and it's also 5 squared minus 2 times 2 squared, so it's 5 min square minus twice a square. And 23, well, you can do that one for yourself. Um, should have a warning here. When we looked at numbers being a sum of two squares, so if you wanted to solve p is equal to x squared plus y squared, the solution was essentially unique. I mean, so, that, so for instance, 5 is equal to 1 squared plus 2 squared, and we can also write this as 2 squared plus 1 squared or minus 2 squared plus 1 squared and so on. Um, but these are all really the same optic changes of sign and switching the order. However, if we're representing a number as an indefinite form, there can be many different ways of doing it. For example, 7 is equal to 2 times 2 squared minus 1 squared. But we can also write it as 2 times, let me see, 2 times... 4 squared, that would be 32, and then we can subtract 5 squared, or we can write it as, so the next case is going to be if we add 5, so it's 7, yeah, if, 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 if we take um, 2 times 8 squared minus 11 squared, um, this will work as well. So, so there are lots and lots of different ways of writing 7 as 2 times x squared minus y squared. Um, so um, we see that there are several complications that come when you do indefinite forms rather than definite forms. So, so for definite forms, um, it's easier to tell when two reduced forms are equivalent. So two reduced forms are equivalent um, only if A is, is equal to B or a is equal to c, in which case we can the only thing we can do is switch b to minus b. So it's very easy to tell whether two forms are equivalent. For indefinite, we can have many non-equivalent reduced forms. Um, it's quite complicated to tell whether reduced forms are the same. Well, actually, it's not all that complicated, but... Um, it's, it's sufficiently complicated that I'm not going to um, do it this lecture. Um, th th there's a method for doing this worked out by Gauss where you sort of arrange the forms in, in nice cycles and, and, and this allows you to tell wh wh when two, re two reduced indefinite forms are equivalent. Um, um, for definite forms, there are only a finite number of representations. If we want to solve n is equal to ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared, for a fixed value of n, there are only a finite number of values of x and y. For instance, if we're trying to write n is equal to 
x squared plus y squared, obviously x and y must be at both most the square root of n. For indefinite forms, there, there are often an infinite number of representations. So we saw examples of this earlier when we were when we were solving things like um, x squared minus 2y squared is equal to 1, and we found there were infinitely many solutions of this. Um, so um, you can ask um, the question when are there only when are any two forms of the same discriminant equivalent and for definite forms um, as I mentioned last lecture we've solved this there are only a few cases of discriminants such that there's only one equivalence class of that form so you remember the the largest one we found was d equals um, minus one six three and although it's quite difficult to prove there are no more, we do actually know this. For indefinite forms, this is an open problem. So we can ask, are there an infinite number of discriminant D with um, all forms equivalent? Um, and numerical evidence suggests that there may well be um, an infinite number. Um, there's also some sort of theoretical evidence for this due to Cohen and Lenstra. Um, so if you want to find out about more about this, you can look up the, the, the Cohen-Lenstra um, heuristics on Google or Wikipedia or something. And that, that they actually have a sort of a conjecture that um, which actually estimates the, the number of um, um, positive discriminants of forms less than a given number such that um, any two forms are equivalent. So we suspect there are an infinite number of positive discriminants with, with, the, with, with, with a single class of forms, but we don't know how to prove this. So, so there, there, there are some basic open questions about indefinite forms. Um, okay, um, so far we, we've been discussing when a prime can be written as um, a a value of a form for simplicity and you can ask more generally what happens if you try representing an arbitrary number that isn't a prime of such a form um, well we're going to discuss this next lecture uh, except for simplicity we're just going to do the form x squared plus y squared in order to illustrate um, what goes on